coming in uh, hopefully none of you had uh, a lot of money in the stocks today you know 450 points dow jones pay me up Oh, down. Way back up or no, down. down, down. Back down. down. Uh, yeah, it's it's crazy. It's it's uh, much much worse than it was what to to today's value. So good. So we are here for voice first. Anybody in the room? I did like this talk up seven eight times now, and I met a lot of folks out there. But I think so. Nobody in the room heard. You know, this is the first time for everybody in this talk for the voice first talk. Okay, wonderful, great. So here's my Twitter link uh, and my LinkedIn. If you want to connect later on, it's G Mishra, G for Gaurav, M for Mishra, uh, straightforward, and both on Twitter and LinkedIn. Gmishra.com for going to LinkedIn if you want to connect. Um, so I'm going to talk about you know voice first uh, ecosystem. Um, I, I've, I've been working with a lot of enterprises globally, um, including you know ST Lauder related, McKinsey Consulting. Um, as, a, as a consultant to you know in, on their digital experience, um, so we have some learnings around from that. So you know before we jump in, you know a couple of stats. Uh, so Gartner says you know this is few years back. I think if I'm not wrong, 2017 when Gartner says about 2020, and we are at 2020 now. You know customers are going to manage 85% of the relationship with the organizations without interacting with the human, right? And we're seeing more and more you know digital interactions happening. You know, uh, this is a very famous quote. Uh, somebody said from Alibaba in one of the conferences way long back, you know, about three, four years back. Uh, and, you know, Gartner and Forrester have a mixed view to it, right? Forrester agrees with this uh, stats that saying that, you know, 50% by this year, by 50% of the searches would be voice based search. Gartner says, hmm, that would be around 30, 30 odd percent, something like that. But it's still very relevant, right? Uh, for, for, for us to worry about it at least um here's this uh, this is a very famous uh, innovation curve anybody anybody seen that curve earlier anywhere this particular curve it's called innovation curve gartner uses it all the time you know it's a, it's a pretty famous curve right so if you if you look at this curve right and you can see at the top it's pretty higher but if you see at the top you see blockchain right there at the top which is at the peak as a, as a technology, right? You know, you have all. So this is called innovation hype curve. So all these technologies goes to a to a hype, goes up right at the top, and then it goes down, and then it stabilizes, right? That's that's a natural hype innovation curve. So blockchain, you can see that right there is at the top, and you'll see that virtual personal assistants, conversational user user interface and user interfaces is still you know very early in the hype, right? So we're still not there in terms of the 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 most hyped place. So it's not. It's not something that you know is going to go down very soon, right? The hype is still going to peak in, in in coming years. And you know, bots are getting cheaper, right? Uh, you have literally, you know, throwaways now happening on on the you know the Alexas on the, on the Christmas, New Year. Same with Google, you know, forty nine bucks. You know, there was there's a this this year, right? On the Black Friday scale, they had like nineteen bucks. Uh, you know, sale on you know eco devices and Google Home devices, right? So it's pretty cheap, right, for people, and uh, it's, it's being bought a lot, right? There are about 1.8 billion um, um, devices, right? That's that's expected by by next year. So a lot of devices are in the home, right? And people are accessing it, right? Um, so how do we how do we you know how do we take care of that? So we'll go there. Um, so but but there are other other ang angle as well, right? So while there a lot of people are buying these devi uh, devices, they're interacting with it. You know, we have all faced it. It's pretty frustrating, right? And then there are other challenges where, uh, you know, organizations and people are looking at saying that, hey, you know, this is something that's going to, you know, replace humans. There is a fear of NSA hearing uh, onto us, right, saying that NSA is listening, whatever we are saying, which is true pretty much, actually. You know, even the phones, right, which you have right here, you know, you know it's actually recording all what you're saying. You know, even the conversation we are having right now. Uh, so it's, there is there is a lot of worry out there as well, but we will not talk about it. We'll 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 definitely not talk about that today, right? Uh, you know, we'll we'll set aside all the worries. We'll set aside all the problems. We'll say, okay, whatever is there, how do we how do we tackle it? How do we you know make use of it, right? How do we get ready for the future? Uh, and you know, now I'm gonna go a little technical. Now, what 
is uh, you know what is what is the difference right in in terms of content right uh, and between voice world and the normal world right so there are two type of content at least what we say from a content strategy point of view the first one is the web based content which you all see re read all the time right and another is a conversational content right now big difference between the conversational content um, uh, and and the con and, and the web based content uh, is the verbosity right so if you are you know web based content you're reading a 2000 word articles you'll simply scroll down you'll find very quickly on what is a relevant topic for you what is the relevant keyword for you right and you'll you'll get to that very quickly right you can't do that on the conversational content right so it's very low verbosity right you have to be very very contextual when when you are you know building a voice Centric content, to content, right? A conversational content, right? Uh, very, very screen-based, and something that we all tend to, uh, you know, forget or you know, not really notice is that hyperlinks, right? Hyperlinks is actually the central piece of all the web, you know, that we know, right? You know, where you go into a page, you read a content, then you find a you know, different page being linked from there, from a different interest, and then you navigate through it, right? But there is no such uh, structure present in the voice world, right? So it's very unidirectional. It's one directional. You can't say that, hey, I read something which is, I heard something which was like five, ten minutes back, which might be relevant on, you know, on the basis of what I'm hearing right now. Can I go back? No, not possible today at least, right? So it's very unidirectional. That means when you're, con uh, when the content is being served on these channels, you have to be very contextual. You have to be, you know, lower both, you know, right on the point. You know, for, for the users, and we'll come to some examples later on on what that means, right? Um, and and why it is important, right? So you know, before before we jump on saying that, how do we do it? You know, let's understand why it is important, right? Now, are 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 we at a place where voice is completely taking over and the business are going you know kaboot if if they are not on the voice? It's not today, right? It's it's not there today. But but you know, there there are challenges that you know can be tackled very. Uh, you know, from a low hanging fruit point of view, right? Very quickly uh, from a voice content strategy, right? And the challenge is that you know, if you don't do that today, right? From a content strategy, and we are all building, you know, Drupal centric websites. We are building content types, right? And these content types, if you are not structuring these content types today in the right way, you know, all the content that would be built, right, in the next many many years, right, would be then need to be reworked when the voice is there, you know, in in ma mainstream. So it's better to be prepared. Right to put the right content structure, put the right strategy, and saying that okay, how do we create this content strategy, content structure, content types, schemas, right? So that you know we are ready for the future, right? And and you know a lot of initial uh, dabble with the, uh, a lot of brands, right? That did that they started creating content, uh, right? With very famous you know um, stories about Condé Nast and you know others, you know big publishers. You know, trying to create different content for voice, and you know, launching Alexa skills, and you know, different content for the web didn't work out, right? They're not seen a lot of a lot of good uh, good results from it. One of the reasons is that you can't really do that, right? It's too too complex, too expensive, right? So you have to have you have to use the same content, right, and build it in a way so that it's be it's it's possible to be consumed either over Google Docs or on a display screen or onto a let's say you know any place, right? So how do we how do we go there? How do we go there from you know creating very web centric content to a to a conversational content or a future ready content if you will, right? And I think one of the things you know that we have to take care of is that the conversational legibility, right? If the content uh, which we are you know building right now can be understood very well, and we'll come to some examples on that, it can be really understood while we are hearing that content and not reading that content. That's the extreme. That's that's a central core piece. Right, so every content which can be read, you know, in in their own sense, you know, in their own, um, you know, in the individuality, can be understood, right, with the whole context by a user. Then it's a conversation legibility. If it's not, then then you have to go back and look at the content architecture again, right? And that's one important piece. And then search, you know, uh, you know, takes a, takes a central piece as well, because all the voice, uh, the way that you're going to contain, you know, consume your content on the voice is via search, right? When you're asking a question and you're going to getting an answer, which is which is how human interact, right? I'll I'll ask, go ahead, ask a question to one of my friend. He'll answer me from his mind, right, and say that you know what he knows, right? That's how the human, and that's where we are going, right? That's what that's what the future is. So you know we have, we have to look at all these pieces from a voice content strategy point of view, right? Um, and and how does this bot bot work? So you know before I jumped onto the examples, I wanted to make sure that 
you know everybody in the rooms at least understand the, the basics on how this works right and um, and stop me if anybody has any questions here at any point of time but this is one of the examples on you know what on the top you see is essentially called utterances in the technical world right and in in entrances is when broken down uh, is has a wake word which is alexa hey google okay google right and things like that and then you know you you can open tell launch right these are essentially launch words and after that you started with an invocation this name the top result oh my god <laughs> <laughs> invocation name and the invocation names are different in different technologies so in google we call them actions in alexa we call them skills right uh, in bixby we call them capsules bixby is samsung alternative to all this thing and you know this invocation name essentially is think of as a function right in from a you know programming world right function and in that function you are essentially passing a parameter right which we call a slot slot value so a function you know essentially have two things that you get into a utterance and a slot value utterance tells uh, this function or you know what we call the invocation name here essentially that what needs to happen from that you know utterance and the slot value is a variable which you know essentially feeds into to a result so here the plan my intent plan my trip is essentially loading an intent right in alexa which calls plan my trip intent it's a function name right that we put in the alexa on the back end which is taking the slot value which is next friday and you know feeding it into plan my trip intent so that the function can be uh, you know served and you know user can essentially plan a particular trip right i just wanted to put a little structure here so that everybody understand at how it works and any any question here am i am i clear okay wonderful so i think let's let's then get to some examples right so we talked about you know conversation legibility right we talked about context and then this is a this is a real life example uh, for, uh from uh, a georgia gov case study which actually acquia did with um, you know with georgia gov team you know and they launched this you know alexa skills right and they found some challenges right with you know uh, with the users when they're interacting with the content what exactly the users said right so on georgia gave so what they did is essentially they looked at the same content and they start serving it on the alexa and when they started it they realized that the same content cannot be understood when it it's being heard and why right why was that so so the one of the questions what essentially on on their faq page was how long can i receive benefits now when this this question was on the page of the employment benefits right now when we are reading that content on an employment benefit page a uh, page we totally understand right okay because we are on the employment benefits page a question would be leading to an employment benefit but when same content is being served on alexa or google right you don't know right on which page it is coming from that's why the question has to be completely contextual in its own sense right so they change that content it's a, and it's a real life case study right uh, they change the content from saying how long can i receive benefits to how long can i receive employment benefits right are benefits taxable are employment benefits taxable right so that the content start becoming more contextual and the thing is about hyperlinks right we do this all the time we say that you know uh, learn more about payments and then hyperlink it so the people can go it click it and it's a cta for us right but when you are serving the same content right over alexa you know people would just it, it, it will just leave them you know in the lurch right so learn more about pen, payments and then stop right because it doesn't make sense on the on the alexa world so instead of that what they did is that they take that link remove the uh, the line learn more about payments and hyperlinked receive payments so when it's being read on the on the web right it's you know the person can click on the receive payments and go to the link but if when it's sung, served on alexa it's simply saying receive payments and the, the 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 user is not getting confused right small changes but makes the content full proof for the future right when you are serving it over the voice and then things like that read more about this all right which is doesn't make sense so there is nothing you know it will never make sense on the voice so make every answer and question contextual in their own right it should not link to a different answer or a question right to make 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 it contextual extremely important from an faq point of view and faqs are actually becoming the the main source right of all the question and centric you know um, answers that's how uh, you know most of the users are actually getting to know about the brand 
right you know either on the assistants or either on the website right or the featured snippets faqs are actually becoming a gold mine so everybody should start looking at that right um very quickly will, before i you know go into a little more detail on to the seo side is you know the, the usability path right now this is very important when you are building this content right when you when you are looking at this you know uh, let's say you have a faq page right and if you want to know whether it's a conversational eligibility or not right how do you test it how do you actually know right the the and there are multiple ways of testing different kind of content where you you know uh, looking at the the content pixel perfect and multiple kind of you know qa qa ways but in the conversation usability the only way is essentially to give which is called retrospective retrospective uh, sorry retrospective probing uh, where you give a problem statement to the user right and say that okay you know find the answer right if you don't do that then you will not get your content right right and that becomes a, a very different way of how essentially a content is being text tested you know uh, than than what we know anyway so let's let's jump into a little more um, you know saying that you know how it's impacting right so this is a quick data uh, you know i'm sure would you would have seen it somewhere you know that a lot of uh, teens and adults right are using it on voice you know while watching tv while you know in the bathroom uh, you know it's 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 very very common now right and, and let's move to a you know where where exactly this 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 voice search is happening so you know it's very action oriented so if you are driving right you will find to find nearest gas station find pizza places right near me near me keyword is a very important keyword uh, nowadays right when you're building content right because if you have the near me keyword it actually ranks your content very you know all the for this action oriented uh, search queries right very real time right and you know and very local right so you know what is what time uh, you know the 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 parade is happening in new york right what time halloween parade happening in new york right a phrase that you would probably ask the you know google assistant right so it's very local it's it's not very generic right the the the, the way that usually the query used used to be right uh, and you know these are the these are the google data from google you know where where exactly these searches are happening so people are asking for directions they are you know calling somebody uh, they are detecting text uh, very interesting to use to get help with homework right uh, you know the uh, the two big uh, section right of people who are using this assistant very well are kids and old age people right it's a very you know phenomenal you know thing that to know even even you know google launched a voice only or phone in in india right in very rural part of the world where people don't know how to read uh, you know illiterate people and they are actually able to use it very well the reason that we struggle because we know how to read we know we know to a certain way of reading and knowing and working with the technology but a big part of the world which is actually growing with it the kids or which have never seen this uh, this the the web world you know are actually working very easily with the voice because it's very natural for them which is phenomenal you should you should actually google for it it's a you know very nice case study and and you know something that you know google launched uh, you know a couple of, i think year year and a half back and to play a song find out movie times you know check the time play song or movie you know my wife uh, whenever she's actually browsing netflix or you know amazon prime or hulu she always keeps on you know browsing to a one movie to another and keep on asking you know google home you know what are the ratings what are the reviews right and then picks you know whichever the md i have tells that imdb rating is is higher right so you know and and then usual stuff right so these it's it's actually increasing day by day and when you are so what 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 how do we get there right so what you should do is always aim for uh getting into the feature snippet right which it's is called position 0 in the in the seo world right so you we all know position 1 which has been the dominant right so you get a lot of traffic if you have been on 1 2 3 but now most of the traffic which is there uh, is happening uh, or most of the consumption of information i would say is happening is happening on the position 0 right so if you if you are not if your most uh, useful content right for your business is not there at the featured snippet right it's a huge loss in the from a, from an seo site uh in in the future right so what from from a brand point of view if you want your users your consumers to know something 
right uh, up and want to you know understand your information about your brand make sure that information is right there when they're asking that google in the featured snippet if that's not there you're going to lose it right and that's going to how Google treats voice, right? So when you ask that question, you know, how to respond to a negative online review to a Google, Google will actually, uh, you know, uh, read all these 10 points right there, um, you know, uh, uh, while answering to you, right? So everybody has to get there and, uh, you know, there is, a, there is a long list of how do you do that. I'll not read all of that, but, you know, you can find that on the Google, uh, you know, VSO voice search, uh, you know, uh, things. Uh, uh, but yeah, but you have to look at you know making sure that you have your question should be in H1. Your you should have a listicles in your uh, you know in your body text, and all these listicles should have H2s right uh, with main answers right, uh, which 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 you want Google to read right. But so uh, you know, and what what is that basis right? What is the basics that you should cover? Always optimize your content for long tail keywords right. Always optimize your content for long tail keywords, right? Uh, uh, you know, uh, very interesting thing that I was reading a few days back where, you know, people are even seeing that, you know, the filler words, which we usually don't optimize for. Right? The how, you know, the how, yes, definitely, but the, uh, right? And these are the filler keywords we don't really optimize for are actually making a lot of difference, right? From, from, a, from a voice search point of view, from, the, from a results point of view. So optimize for long tail keywords, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten words, right? Uh, because, you know, it's, it's very fast for people to ask questions on the voice versus type, right? You, and when you're asking questions, you'll be completely contextual, right? How do I go from here to New York via train? Right, you know, so it's a, it's it's not the same, you know, uh, Pennsylvania or sorry, Princeton to New York, right? It will be pen, uh, Princeton to New York via train, you know, completely contextual. So optimize for long tail keywords, right? And use question phrases, phrases, right? Content for like who, what, how, what, right? These are very important in in the content. So when you are optimizing content, ensure that your content is structured in you know in a way that it's answer, answering that question, right? And then ensure that you're using schemas, uh, very, very important, right? And something that we always use, uh, right? Uh, schemas are essentially gonna be the core part of how you, you're gonna run this, this market, right? You know, ensure that, you know, so if you have, so, you know, one of my friends, Eric here, he works for um, and, uh, the, you know, the cancer hospital, the biggest cancer hospital there in New York. And we were just talking about, you know, how he's using the recipes. A schema right on the uh, on, on their website to essentially drive a lot of traffic right because all these people who wants to understand that what kind of a you know things that you know they they, they should eat when you know they are going by a cancer you know and, and challenges right so you know things like that ensure that you 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 you're, you know and and 98 so and if you if you if you would have looked at schema like four five years ago it was very nascent stage but today 98 percent of the use cases is actually got covered um, in the schema.org. So if you haven't, uh, if you are one of your content structure or content types, right, is, is not, uh, you know, structured for schema and some very basic ones like people, right, are all authors, users in the content site that you are having, have a people schema or not. If not, then using a very important, uh, you know, SEO point of view. Anybody who's searching for that particular person is not going to go to your content. Right. So ensure if you have a guest actor coming in, if you have a you know a presenter coming in, talking and you know onto your site, make sure that you have a people schema there. Right. Similarly for articles. Similarly for you know recipes. You know there are tons of things. Right. Cars, insurance, quotes, everything. You know you have tons of schemas out there. And very important schema which actually got launched two three years back is called Speakable Schema. It's actually in beta, uh, not very known. Uh, but with the, the Drupal module, the schema module actually, you know, has that uh, option so you can use that and enable it. But, uh, and I'll, <clears throat> I'll actually don't have that in the slide, but I'll open it because I did open it for the, um, for the presentation. Where is that? Hmm. Yeah, here, right there. So this is a schema that uh, Google launched. Can you see this? Oh, oh yeah, it's visible. It is visible to you guys. Okay, so uh, let's say I. So this is the structure of the schema, right? Uh, let me come here. So, so you know, uh, so whenever you are want a particular content secret on on your page, 
right, or your article to be served by a by a Google Assistant, right, and things like that. Always use the schema, you know, for that particular page. So how it works is you have the context, which you know essentially says what you know. This is essentially a schema context, and then you say type. A type can be a web page, it can be an article, but it says that what kind of you know page you are in, and then it says name. And name is essentially similar thing that you say keywords, right? In, in a very traditional sense, tabs, if you will. But what is the topic, right? What is the topic around which you want that Google to, you know, pick up your answer in, right? So it can be a brand name, it can be a contextual, I don't know, whatever you know your, your business is around, right? Have that in the name, and then you know give a XPath, right? Give a give a it, it can be a CSS selector, it can be an XPath, which is pointing to that particular content which you want. Uh, you know Google to pick up. So Google is asking content creators to put that uh, you know um, you know in, into the schema and this is right now Google says that is only for Google News right and the content that they are you know uh, serving on the for via Google News on the Google Assistant but but you know imagine that Google is asking for a structured content right so Google is asking for a structured content for a specific reason right because they want to understand that what is the part of the question of, because they are looking at going more and more bringing more and more information on the featured snippet right they don't want people to go into a link inside and read the content right they want to give the user the information right there on the Google page right or on the on the, on the device that's their final motto right so Google is asking for it so if you if you are, sorry, somebody asked a question. No. Okay. So if, if you are if you are you know creating your content strategy, ensure that you have a speakable schema right there. You have all the right schemas in your content, right? Which is usually missed because it, it's it's not urgent. It's important. It's not urgent, right? But ensure that it becomes urgent urgent as well, right? And have location data tagged with your content, right? You know, which is have actually coordinates tagged, right? Uh, even if it's a white space. Uh, you know, peop, uh, very interesting piece. People are actually seeing, you know, results where they're saying that if you have a coordinate data inside your page, it's actually being pulled in uh, inside if, if on, on a local search. So if you want the New York folks to know about a Drupal Services uh, company, right? When you are talking about Drupal Services, have somewhere there a location specific information right there on the page. People are actually seeing better results in the SEO world, right? It's a hack, I, I would say, but it's working, right? And then, you know, one of the, uh, and if, if you ever saw that video, uh, which Google uh, did on Google Duplex, right? The the famous IO, Google IO video, couple of, I think, year back, I believe, year and a half back, uh, where they called a salon, right? To book an appointment, right? And, you know, it was pretty much, you know, uh, AI driven, no human, intra, you know, intervention. And it, did something like hmm okay okay you know and things like that so that piece you know was essentially calling a phone number so tomorrow when we are you know when anybody is you know gonna get the information so let's say uh, you know you have you you are looking for a yoga class right and say hey what is what are that hey google what are the top yoga classes near me right and it will list you five classes right there it will say these are the classes you know, here and there and then. And then if you want to interact with that particular brand, with that particular yoga, you know, studio, you'll say, okay, call that yoga studio or contact that yoga studio. So the only way that, you know, uh, the CTA in this voice world is the call to action in the voice world is essentially a phone number, right? And now it will become automated because of Google investing into a lot and making, making in, there is a call joy services that Google launched uh, where you can essentially have a phone number and AI onto it. But ensure that, you know, whenever you are building content, you know, driving to your business, have a CTA there, which is having a phone number. So have a talk to us button, which is, you know, having a phone number, you know, tell HTML link, right? A TEL, right? So have that phone number right there in your content. So that the brand, the people who are, you know, actually uh, discovering you on the voice world can contact you very well, right? Because that's the CTA. That's the only CTA, <laughs> right? The other CTA that Google is doing is that it's, saying that here's the answer and I've sent you a link to the Google Assistant as well, right? That's that's another CTA, but usually that doesn't work very well. The, the final CTA, the final most CTA would be essentially a phone number. And become more mobile friendly and becomes, you know, speed, right? Speed is still very important. It's becoming going more important, right? From a speed point of view. So have, you know, optimize your pages for being mobile friendly, 
mobile friendly and you know as i said you know optimize it for for featured snippet um already talked about it so i think for few case studies right uh, jp morgan right is uh, you know having a bank personal assistant right that's uh, you know helping about uh, you know 3 lakh uh, oh, sorry in indian when i go back to the indian all the time but uh, you know almost like uh, half a million right a little less than half a million uh, you know uh, hours of work workforce right so you know there are organizations like jp morgan tata bank uh, tata capital hdfc bank it's a big bank in india capital one you know mastercard american express who are actually having you know these bots you know being really helpful from a you know customer service point of view right and even a lot of case studies are not out there right but if you are calling a united or american airlines or your bank or wells fargo right and all these things you'll see you'll usually interact with the voice bot first right which will help you on you know on the first level so you know banks are implementing it everybody is implementing it and it's going to be a big big uh, yeah, natural thing for everybody in the future right so yeah there are there are a lot of case studies out there but yeah any, any i think this is pretty much and, and there was a, a architecture platform i was talking a little about bots last time <laughs> that that feel that, that in the deck but anybody interested in that in a in a in an architecture diagram i can talk a little about it we did this for a uh, a fortune 500 uh, you know who had a lot of who were a lot in the field right in from a manufacturing point of view uh, and you know they had essentially bots where they were having the structured and unstructured data you know uh, which we were putting in a in a data processing layer you know processing the information finding out intents and utterances through it and essentially solving it through bots uh, very interesting work um, that we did like year, year and a half back yeah any questions Oh, that was quick. How much time? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, have fun. All right, I have like ten minutes for for any questions. Yeah. So one of the examples you showed was um, like a, a string of H twos, a question. And yep. Like, um. So instead of having the actually go back. Uh, This one. Yeah, Yep. So instead of if I wanted to have a section of the site, like what I have to put in for the title of the, the section, how to respond, or could I have it um, online resources and then give it a give that uh, title a a title tag? So kind of it's, so not just putting the whole thing, but putting in the title tag. Got it. Yeah. The full strength. Does so, that have the same effect? Uh, not the title tag, but then what you're asking is essentially the speakable schema. so you see the name in that speakable schema that i talked about okay. right use that you know if you don't want to use how here which is which is you know probably the most ideal way but if you still want don't want to do it for all the right reasons right from a you know from a content reading point of view you know put that uh, you know uh, how mention in that uh, speakable speakable schema name okay. right so that google knows that you know okay this is the key topic around which you want to you know uh, get recognized on okay get information on but whenever you're doing it ensure you have a listicles listicles works very well today right so you know uh, how do i you know apply a, you know a particular mascara right uh, we are working with estelle order so you know we keep on coming back to that by the way loreal uh, had a very good case study uh, around they how they are using voice uh, and you know using uh, you know how this words how when you know where right and they are seeing a very good results right loreal was the first one who did this in the beauty industry and then others are catching up uh, with them but yeah but use listicles listicles are very important awesome yeah um i want to do you speak here now in the future how voice searches and uh, these kind of products might not connect with the new media laws that are coming out do you see these uh new fields blending together for a new what uh Uh, and what is for I'm not sure oh, about about new age just make sure websites are accessible but right now the yep. standards are pretty general uh -huh. and speak uh, specifically to uh, yeah. the voice commands call it so and if you could repeat the question for the uh, recording please yeah sure absolutely so the question is that uh you know how the voice and all this content strategy is going to work with the new ada guidelines that are coming in and how it will marry together very well so uh, this is this 
all this is actually a very important part from the accessibility point of view, right? Uh, now, the, I, I'm not sure about the guidelines, but I'll definitely go back and look into it. But, you know, but understand that, you know, any word or any answers that you know, Google is optimizing for, right, you know, while serving a particular answer on, onto the voice is actually have to be contextual, right? So if it's not contextual, it's not going to rank, right? Now, if that means that it's actually, you know, very uh, accessible for the people to understand it, consume it. Right, Google, uh, while they're building their NLP in NLP NLU engines, and there, there is a video that you should definitely look at. They're actually talking uh, to people, and they're actually you know taking the people in consideration which are voice disabled, which stutter, right, which you know can't speak properly, right. So that's the goal that they're actually starting with, right. So they're building their NLU engine, keeping their people in the mind. So all the NLU engines, you know, they're, they're looking at a 98% accuracy with the people of you know speech disability. Right, that's the goal that you know they are in, and they're they're, they're doing pretty well onto that. So uh, it's actually by design accessible, right? So if it's not contextual, it would it would it would never rank on onto the Google Voice in the first place. I, I can uh, speak to one thing um, when he was showing the links, the old and the new links, um, how making your links um, understandable when read is an important uh, accessibility goal. Um, you know, don't just have uh, click here to find out more, but have your link something that so when it's read out of context, the user will know where they're going. Because a screen reader can just read off links on a page for a user. And so that is one example of the overlap. Yeah, yeah. A very important point, right? The big challenge with accessibility is that it's very difficult for everybody to go in, find that link, click it very easily, right? Any different kind of disabilities, right? So whatever they are consuming, if that's very contextual, it answers what they have a question, you know, it's it's a good accessible content. It seems like there's a lot of overlap between SEO and accessibility and voice yeah. Um, readiness. Yeah. But one conflict I see is that voice readiness is looking for short, uncomplicated sentences and paragraphs. Yep. A lot of content just doesn't lend itself to that. Yep. Is there, can you use like a, a JSON-LD or one of schema.org approaches to provide sort of voice content for more complicated? Yeah, yeah. So, so there is a, uh, there is a, you know, uh, there is a case study on backlinko.io. Backlinko.io is a very good, uh, you know, resource for learning about SEO and things like that. Back, backlink, backlink yeah. co.io. So just say backlinko.io, you'll find it, right? It's a very, very famous blog. Uh, so they did this some study, right? And they essentially found out that the feature snippets, and this is a study about the, about the feature snippets, because that's where most of the, you know, traffic is going in, right? The position zero. And they find out that, you know, the, the content which is ranting on these feature snippets are actually 1200 plus words, right? Actually long form content. So it's not, Google is actually giving more authority to the long form content than a short form content. So while you, and it's, and then it's, and it's finding the parts which it needs to spell it out in that feature snippet. And that's where the speakable schema comes in very important. So you have to identify pieces which you want to be, you know, summarized into a, you know, onto the voice and put that in the speakable schema, right? And then whatever the rest of the content is, you know, can, can just flow in. Right, and that's that's important. And another thing is that use listicles. So listicles plus the speakable schema, you know, should cover most of the the, the, the the SEO part of the thing. So keep on writing the content that you know the way content is written, but ensure that you know it's either in the speakable schema or you have listicles so that it can be picked by Google. Does that does that answer? It, it does. I'm just curious about the, the speakable schema because my internet connection died. I couldn't look it up. Sure. <laughs> What is that essentially? Are we? Is it like summaries of the content that's meant? To Some area, correct, students? correct. Yeah, I'll, I'll just go back again. I might probably do it very quickly. Um, so this is the structure, right? So, so you this is right there on the on the head tag, right? And you know, then you are defining. So, you know, so for example, you know, uh, one of the things you said, right? Title, right? So here you see that X part right there is essentially saying, you know, to take a title for the speakable schema, right? So topic, right? So when uh, any, uh, you know, top question comes in about quick brown fox. So if I ask Google Assistant, quick brown fox, then don't 
take all the content for answering, but just take the title, right? So you are specifying that X parts or the CSS selector or a part of the content and saying that you know when a topic, when a, when a relevant question comes in on my topic, which is the name type there, name Quick Brown Fox, you know, take these particular part of the content and don't take the entire path. So it's telling Google exactly what what do you want to focus on, right? From a voice point of view. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? No? Okay. Great. Thank you guys.